So I was right about my switching bodies at the end of episode 8. Because in this episode, episode 9 of Rascal Does Not Dream of Bunny Girl Senpai, we find out that Mai switched bodies with Noroka Toyohama, who we find out are half-sisters, and they share the same father, different mothers. And we find out that Noroka is part of an idol group called Sweet Bullet. And I I'm, I think I'm going to like this this arc a little bit more than the others, just because Mai is going to be more involved in this Um Granted, it's not going to be in her own body, but it she's still going to be well because it's her half sister. Um, and going and and talking about this episode, and talking about it and kind of thinking about what was going on, uh, there's a few things I wanted to to point out. Not again, not go through the scene by scene or in a in a timeline kind of way, but just going to talk about a few aspects uh, of what's going on in this story. So. We find out early on that Noroka has an inferiority complex with Mai, and in the time that Sakuta is with Noroka in Mai's body, we come to find out um, that she has she harbors this hatred for her, and basically because she's always been compared to Mai, the mom's always compared Noroka to Mai, and she she, she says specifically like whenever I went to an audition, like you would always get it, and casting this shadow over over me and then when she went on hiatus she said uh, I, that's when I started to get you know parts here and there and then she was able to get into the idol group and her mom actually started to praise and be kinder to her and now that Mai is back from hiatus and doing all these commercials and stuff she feels that this this opportunity that she has to shine is being taken away and for that reason she hates Mai and Mai actually says something interesting. She says, "I hated you too." Uh, she uses past tense, so I don't I don't know how much it is now. Uh, it still might be harbored in there, but basically, she says that the reason that she hated Noroka was not because of anything sh uh, she did, but is the actions of their father. Because their father left Mai's mom and got married, and you know went with uh, Noroka's mom and. Because of his actions, she hated Nodoka. You know, not directly, but indirectly, she got hated. She just got grouped up with that, and and they there's not really a resolution of this conversation. Uh, they just kind of leave it at that, and then they, it kind of gets awkward between both of them. Um, and what happens is they have to live each other's lives um, as. And so Mai has to live as Noroka and Noroka has to live as Mai. And so they have to look and they have to get into like, you know, Mai learning all these dance moves and singing, which is something she's never done. Whereas Noroka has some experience in at least the schedule that she's been given by Mai, which is like some commercials, interviews, um, stuff like that. And what's interesting is uh, what you saw through the episode, you, you saw all these montages of, of Mai like, trying her best to imitate or not necessarily imitate but just to get better in dancing and in singing because you see her in karaoke at one point you see her jogging um to help like with her breathings with singing I, and you also see her performing um and all this other stuff showing just how much effort she's putting into trying to live the way Nodoka is and, and do her roles properly and on the other hand, Noroka, like, you do see her do the interviews, you do see her do all, all the stuff that is in Mai's calendar, but it doesn't show just how much effort she's putting into it. Uh, you do see some, a few things that um, Sakuta sees where, like, she's trying to impersonate Mai, but he can tell that it looks fake. And actually, near the end of the episode, he talks about, like, if you were more natural with your smile because he he said at one point he, he talked about how my uh praised her the way that she did the commercial and all that stuff and you saw this genuine smile and he says you should use that instead of trying to impersonate my and uh and also he, also he brings up a great point on that uh, that she 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 tries to impersonate my so much that it it's not really working for her. she needs to find her own thing and so they don't really give us a way of how this this part of the adolescent syndrome of Mai and 
Naruka can be fixed because again they're not really speaking to each other all throughout this episode they have few encounters here and there but Mai doesn't really know how to talk to her and it's not really explained how, why if it's just because she still harbors those those feelings of hatred or uh, animosity or if it's just she doesn't know where to begin to to start this conversation and Sakura is trying to get this information of how to help them as well and he gets it from an unlikely source he gets it from Kamisato um, who is Kunimi's girlfriend and basically what she tells him is because she has an older sister and she tells him that she doesn't basically he understands that he that she doesn't it's not as simple as liking and or hating the person it's just that Kamisato in, in her essence she has a bigger sister who was like the student body uh, president and who like got into the prime university in her first try she doesn't like being compared and it's annoying to be compared to to her older sister and trying to and having their parents tell her to be like that and so I think this is going to help Sakuta push and nudge Mai and Nodoka in the right way so they can resolve this. Um, I did want to talk about though, the ending. The ending is actually really interesting because near the end you have Mai who gives the key uh, to her place where Nodoka is staying and gives it to Sakuta. And before he leaves, she specifically says, do not open the cabinet doors in the Japanese style room. It's just like it says never ever, and anyway, Sakura goes to the the her apartment and is gonna cook for Nodoka. And then the very last thing you see is him about to open the cabinet doors in the Japanese style room, and then it ends. Um, so there's a I don't know what's gonna happen there. I kind of feel it's gonna be like a bait where you're gonna see him try and open it, and then either. Nodoka is going to go in there and stop him or he's going to stop himself. I don't really think he's going to open it. I could be wrong. Uh, if he does open it, I wonder what it could be. Like, I don't know if it's going to be stuff about him, about how much she adores him and maybe she keeps all this stuff that happened between uh, her and him. Uh, it could be that. It could be something about her parents. Um, it, it could be like her research that she's trying to do as well to try and... Uh, help heal the scars that he has on his chest i mean that that's a possibility but yeah we'll have to wait till next week um it's a really good episode uh one thing i did want to mention before uh before i leave is i really love what they've been doing with the endings so if you watch the endings of every girl from mai to tomoe to futaba to Nodoka, you see all these different changes in them and it's interesting because it the background changes to whether it's like night for Futaba or if it's kind of like the for Tomoe it's kind of like after the rain type of uh, background and for Mice is kind of a sunsetty type of thing which is also kind of the same as Nodoka's but they're very different in the lighting and who is waiting for him at the end so it's, it's really interesting how they've changed that with every girl because it i kind of feel it the the way that the background is whether it's sunrise sunset middle of the day or at nighttime it kind of tells you uh what the background is going to be when something big happens like for example futaba the, the when she finally realizes how her friends see her and how important she is to them was at nighttime when they're doing the fireworks tomorrow was after the rain where she actually finally admits that she likes Sakuta. Um, so the stuff like that, it's, it's really interesting. I, I think it's just a fine touch that they've done in this anime. And again, in this one, a lot of, in all the other ones, it was, it was Sakuta was always the one that the girls come to or Sakuta and, and Kunimi. But in this one, if you look at the very end, the one that Nodoka is going to is going to be Mai. So this makes me believe that Sakuta's his role and it's going to be a lot less prevalent than in the other arcs of the girls so I'm excited for that I'm excited for that change but let me know what you think um, put a comment in there like subscribe to us and check podomatic.com for all of our latest podcast episodes thanks so much for listening this is David the Smash Fan and I'm out